Today, we're gonna to talk about what are the differences in driving when you're in a big market versus a small market. So today, I, Jay Crater, who is in San Francisco, and Joe, who is in Minneapolis, we're gonna share with you some of the similarities and the differences between our driving styles, and we're gonna look at five different areas. And stick around, because at the end of the video, I'll share with you what are the two biggest differences in driving big market versus small market. So hey everyone, I'm Jay Crater with The Rideshare Guy, and today we're gonna to look at five areas, and we're gonna compare and contrast uh, driving in a big market versus driving in a small market. So let's get started. The first topic is the new weekly ride challenge bonus, which Lyft is now offering. Now both Joe and I drive primarily for Lyft, and since this new bonus came out, it has changed my driving uh, during the day dramatically. I used to drive in the morning, say from five until about noon. Then I'd take a break in the middle of the day and then I would drive again from five until seven, all because I had to get those peak hours. Uh, now with the new bonus, I can just drive straight on through. I feel a lot less stress, much more relaxed because I can just drive and knock off at two or three in the afternoon. Sometimes I drop off at noon. So now we're gonna go to Joe. Joe, how's this new weekly ride bonus impacted your driving? Thanks, Jay. Um, the weekly ride challenge has not affected my driving too much. It's just been a lot, it just makes things a lot more stress-free. Under the power driver bonus, you had to maintain a 90% acceptance rate and also drive those, those peak hours during those specific hours. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So it's a lot more stress-free. I can drive whenever I want to, although I do still try to maintain and hit those AM peak hours especially. I mean, you can get your vast majority of rides during those times. I no longer need to achieve a certain amount of peak rides, but I drive during those peak hours because that's when the most ride requests happen and driving during those hours will, will get me to that weekly ride challenge tier, that, that ride tier quicker than the off hours. Great, thanks Joe. Topic number two is the removal of the 90% acceptance rate requirement for the bonus. Now, this hasn't made much of a difference in my driving style. Um, I always got around 95%. That's my, like, my average acceptance rate. I accept almost every ride that I get. The only time I decline is during the morning or the afternoon rush hours where I wanna get a bunch of short rides and I don't wanna be taken outside of the city. So that's still the same, that hasn't changed. What about you, Joe? So this is one of the main differences between San Francisco and Minneapolis. Um, I went under the power driver bonus. I was maintaining right around a 90% acceptance rate because here in Minneapolis, it's not as dense as San Francisco. We'll get ride requests, especially when we're just outside of downtown or, or sometimes even when we are downtown during the busiest times, the AM commute, we'll get requests from 15 minutes away. Um, and you don't want those requests. So under the, the power driver bonus, I would decline those requests and then I'd be worried about needing to maintain that 90% acceptance rate. Sometimes I would even accept requests and then call the passenger and say, hey, you may just want to re-request and if they cancel, then that doesn't affect my acceptance rate. So not needing to maintain that 90% acceptance rate has been pretty big for me here in Minneapolis um, and my acceptance rate has hovered right around 65 to 75%. Last week, I think it was around 80%, but there are still quite a few requests that I will decline. Our third topic is destination filters. So here in San Francisco, I use all my destination filters almost every single day. And I use them not only at the end of my shift to make sure I get some rides home, but during the middle of the day I use them so I can get longer rides when the traffic is light. I like to get longer rides, and I often do. Um, so it's easier here in the big market to get a lot of long rides using the destination filter going up and down uh, north and south. How about for you, Joe? So I love the destination filter, but I don't get as many destination rides here in Minneapolis compared to Jane in San Francisco. Um, I will use the destination filter, especially when I want to head home for the day, and I'll usually get a couple rides. Um, I want, I, I typically want to just use Lyft because I'm trying to get that weekly ride challenge bonus. A Lyft ride to me is worth more than an Uber ride, but sometimes if I'm on the outskirts, say in the suburbs, and I wanna get home urgently, or I wanna make sure I can get a destination ride, I will log into both Uber and Lyft in destination mode simultaneously. Thanks, Joe. Now, number four is making the distinction between long rides versus short rides. So here in San Francisco, this distinction is really important because I need to get a lot of short rides 
during uh, the prime time hours in the morning, you know, from uh, like from seven until about 10, because I can get a lot of rides because I got a lot of people going to work. I don't want to take long rides during that time. But then once I get to about 10 o'clock till about three in the afternoon, I want long rides. So I'm really going for the long rides there and that's where I'm using the destination filter. How about you, Joe? What kind of distinction do you draw between the, the long rides and the short ride? So I'm a lot like Jay. Um, I like those short rides during the peak hours. I'll do the long rides during the off hours, but I will also accept long rides during those peak hours. Sometimes I'll accept airport trips. Um, my, my heavy driving days are Mondays and Tuesdays, so those are heavy, heavy airport days. So if I get a trip to the airport, I'll typically get one from the airport, and that will take probably about 30, 45 minutes in order to complete those two trips, which isn't too bad. But sometimes I will employ Jay's strategy of canceling a long ride during peak hours, especially if I know it's gonna take me out of downtown when it's really busy. I don't want that, I will, I will cancel those rides sometimes. It was really nice when Lyft would give us that estimated ride time feature when that was in place, because then I could just decline that request right off the bat instead of arriving at the location and canceling. Now our fifth and final area to cover is airport protocol, what we're calling airport protocol. So I can't even handle the airport. So in San Francisco, I never, ever, ever wait in the staging lot for a ride. Um, as you know, if you drive with a passenger to the airport, uh, if there's a passenger that needs to get picked up, um, they call this reassign. Uh, they'll assign you somebody and they'll bypass the staging lot and give you, give you that passenger right away. If I don't get that passenger, I do not wait. I always head back to the city. Within about 12 minutes, I can be back in San Francisco getting another ride. How about you, Joe? So here in Minneapolis, I will wait in that airport queue. Um, my big driving days, again, are Mondays and Tuesdays, and, and those are heavy, heavy travel days, so the airport's pretty busy. I've found that when I go to the queue, I typically don't, don't have to wait more than 15 minutes until I get my next request. Um, so it wouldn't make sense to deadhead back to Minneapolis or St. Paul, which would be a 15 minute ride. It just makes sense to stay there right at the airport. I do get rematched from the airport occasionally. I'd say maybe five to 10% of the time that I drop someone off at the airport. But for the most part, it just makes sense once you drop someone off at the airport here, just go wait in that staging lot, especially on Mondays and Tuesdays. You shouldn't have to wait long to get another ride. That's awesome. So. In summary, the two biggest areas where we make a distinction here is in the destination filters, where I use mine a lot and Joe doesn't use his so much, and at the airport, where Joe will wait for a ride in the staging lot and I never do in San Francisco. Is there anything we missed? If there is, uh, leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed yet to the YouTube channel for the Rideshare Guy, by all means, uh, click and subscribe, and that way you'll be kept up to date on all the videos that come out uh, regarding anything to do with rideshare driving in this gig economy.